Our next poet has quite the collection of chapbooks and a wonderful sense of humor. One of the uh, titles that caught my eye was Little Lulu Meets Vincent Van Gogh. And uh, there are copies of it available outside uh, by the door. In fact, there are quite a few poetry books out there, well worth checking out. Please give a very warm welcome to Judy Wells. <laughs> Good to be here. Supermarket love. Last week at Whole Foods, as I was reaching into the refrigerated shelves for the coldest tofu with the most future expiration date, a yellow gloved hand from the other side <laughs> laid itself on mine. I nearly jumped a mile. Oh, sorry, said a woman's voice from the other side. A man behind me laughed. This week, as I walked by the same tofu section, I heard a disembodied voice from the other side say, I needed you, and you have never been there for me once. Yes, I have, I wanted to protest. Last week, <laughs> this is called uh, Mary's Poem. It's for Lenore Mary Davis, who was one of the um, Berkeley's great pan activists, and she's not with us anymore. She was my neighbor. Mary's Poem. Mary saved our night blooming jasmine. It was dying. Mary saved our night-blooming jasmine. There was a hard freeze one night, and the jasmine took sick. Soon it looked like a couple of sticks, but Mary wanted to save it. Every day she watered it and coaxed a few little green leaves from the dry sticks. I pruned it a bit, clucking and shaking my head, but Mary persisted. Now it's blooming once again by our stairway, the sweet smell of jasmine rising through our kitchen window. But now Mary is doing poorly. She's had a heart attack, a bad back, a broken hip, a broken arm, and her bones are porous. If we could pour water into her, if we could make her sprout green leaves and strong new branches, we would do it in a minute, but we can't. Mary saved our night-blooming jasmine. It was dying. Mary saved our night-blooming jasmine. <laughs> Mary Davis, name to remember. The Glass Ship. I saw it far out on the horizon, a blinding light. As it came closer, I realized it was a magnificent sailing ship made completely of glass, glass sails, mast, hull, a dazzling spectacle in the sun. At times, the glass ship reflected rainbow lights like a crystal. I had heard stories of this legendary ship, though no one I knew had ever seen it. But here it was bearing down on me in my small boat. I looked up at the now looming ship and spotted a young man and woman on the deck, dressed completely in white. They were dancing, whirling slowly around, waltzing to be exact. I saw one face, then another, and was astonished to recognize my own parents. A longing arose in me, and I called out to them. They stopped and looked down at me curiously. My father with his slicked back hair, my mother with her black curly bob, and did not seem to recognize their daughter. They resumed their positions, waltzing around the glass deck, a whirl of white transfixed only by each other. Gradually, I realized why they did not recognize me. I had not yet been born. 
Here were my parents, deeply in love, before they were married, before the four children began to come, before the toil of creating a home. The glass ship sailed off with my dancing parents. Its wake caused a slight rocking of my small skin boat before I was left alone on the still sea. One last one, uh, Little Lulu Talks with Frida Kahlo. Um, it's actually Little Lulu Talks with Vincent Van Gogh is the title of the chapbook. And, I, and I've got my Kahlo uh, socks on too um, for the poem. Oh, and in case you don't remember who Little Lulu is, for you, um, a cartoon character of the 20th century, famous, here Louie, get a shot there. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Um, little Lulu talks with Frida Kahlo. Little Lulu, said Frida Kahlo, you need an extreme makeover. Those skinny legs need covering up. Why don't you try a Tijuana outfit like me? You need a long purple velvet skirt with a white cotton ruffle at the hem. You need a red silk blouse like the one I wore for my self-portrait for my lover, Leon Trotsky. You need a salmon shawl with long flowing fringe. Change your hair, little Lulu. Get rid of that silly cap. Here, I will braid your locks with hanks of red and purple yarn. I will set fresh gardenias in your locks, and you will be a queen, little Lulu. A queen with turquoise rings on every finger and bells on your bright red leather boots. But Frida, said little Lulu, with all that weight of velvet skirt, turquoise jewelry, bells and locks, I won't be able to walk. That's not the point, said Frida. The point is to be remembered when you stand in a doorway between two white curtains. The point is to be immortal like a goddess, like a great earth mother. The point is to be like me, Frida, my Lulu, my Lulacha, me muchacha, my Lulita, me, me, me. Thank you.